Hello, welcome to Gradient Descent. In this video, we'll go over an example of Gradient Descent and calculate it step by step. First, we're given a set of data points for x and y. Really simple four data points for a known square function. Okay, that's what we're going to be using to demonstrate for this video. Here, y is our target and x is our independent variable. The goal is to find the best fit line y is equal to w times x. The coefficient which we are referring to as w is what we're going to be finding. The first step is we have to define the cost function. In our case, we are going to be using mean squared error as our cost function, abbreviated as MSE. So our optimization goal is to minimize MSE for the given regression y equal to w times x. Let's remind ourselves what MSE is. It's the average of squared difference between the actual value and the predicted value. The step two is we have to calculate the gradient of the cost function or the derivative of the cost function. Having already defined y equal to w times x. Let's now have that input into our MSE equation with a value of n is equal to 4 because we have four data points. And once we take derivative, we get this equation, which is 1 fourth times sum over x times wx minus y. You might recall wx minus y is actually the error term from our previous linear regression space. Okay. So now, now that we understand what this gradient is, this is the formula we're going to be using later on when we iteratively try to find a solution for w. The next step is to initialize a few variables. First one we'll initialize is the learning rate, which we shall abbreviate as LR. In our example, LR is equal to 0.1, and this will be held constant throughout our algorithm. The other variable that we have to initialize is the coefficient W itself. We are going to randomly pick a value of 4 in our example, which would be the starting value for the gradient descent algorithm. Remember, these are just random initializations or starting value initializations for the algorithm and in no way expected to be close to the optimal value. The next step, which is step number four, is we are going to go into an iterative loop which, where we repeat multiple steps until the convergence of the algorithm. For this, the first thing we do is we'll be computing gradient G. The second thing we'll do in the loop is we will be computing the value of W using the previous, val previous known value of W minus the learning rate times the gradient. Okay. The intuition here is we are trying to move in step sizes of the learning rate in the opposite direction of the gradient so that the gradient shall eventually converge to zero. That is, we are walking down the direction that minimizes the gradient, which is also why this algorithm is called gradient descent. So now let's again explore that the formula. W at time t is written as w at time t minus 1 minus the learning rate times the gradient. Okay, Here g is the gradient which we have calculated in step 2 and lr is the step size which we have initialized in step 3. Okay, And it is worth noting that for each iteration we will calculate both the gradient g and the new value of w. new value of w, last known value of w, and the step size times gradient, which is what we have seen.
Now that we have seen the steps, let's calculate W for the given example. First, we shall keep all the formulations and initializations that we have so far seen in this red box, so we can refer back as needed. All right. So the first iteration is we are going to be using W is equal to 4, which is what we have initialized it with. And for the given value of x and y, let's compute gradients. The value of x and y columns are shown here. And also we are calculating wx column, wx minus y column, and x times wx minus y column. The gradient as per the formula shown above is then the sum of x times wx minus y divided by 4, which is what we're doing here, and the value of such a computation comes to 15.00. Next, let's compute the value of w. The new value of w is calculated as previous known value of w minus learning rate times the gradient. So that happens to be 4 minus 15 into 0 0.1. So the result is 2.5. So the new value of w is 2.50, which is what we'll be using in our next iteration. So let's do one more iteration in a similar sequence. In the second iteration, we are going to be using a w value of 2.50, which is what we got from the previous iteration. And again, as earlier, we have x column, y column, which is our input data. Then we have extra columns computed, which are wx and wx minus y, and x times wx minus y. All right. So when we go through this process of calculation, the sum of x times wx minus y column divided by 4 is our gradient which comes to a value of 3.75. Next, let's compute the new value of w for this step, which is again calculated as the previous known value of w minus the learning, learning rate times gradient. And that happens to be 2.50 minus 3.75 times 0 0.1. So the result is 2.13. So the new value of w, 2.13, is what is going to be used for our next iteration. As we see, we can continue to run these iterations using steps we have seen earlier. And when we do that, the third iteration has got a gradient of 0 0.94 with a new W value of 2.03. The fourth iteration has got a gradient of 0 0.23 with a new W value of 2.01. The fifth iteration is of a gradient of 0 0.06 with a new val W value of 2.00. And the sixth iteration is where the gradient comes to zero. So once the gradient is very close to zero or has already converged to zero, then the W value we currently have is the solution we are seeking and in our case, the W value of 2.0 is the solution as per this calculation. And we do know that this is the right answer because for the given data, we were using a squared data set. Okay. So that's how we run gradient descent step by step. And once you have multiple dimensions in your data set, these algorithms also scale based on matrix formulations. Okay. So that's all for this video, and I hope you enjoyed learning gradient descent. Good luck to you.